what's going on guys my name is Tafari and today we're going to do my recap and review for Prison Break episode 3 uh, it's entitled Liar and so yo in the beginning right it, it starts off with a shot of Michael copying down his tattoo which is uh, like Arabic writing um, and then he like throws it out the window he's like his origami skills are OP right now and he throws it out the window and he like even creates like a little pocket to put some gum in right and uh, at first we thought Maybe the gum was just for it to fly correctly, but it turns out that um, it was the way that he would pay his like messenger boy who would deliver his messages to Lincoln, who is in town. Uh, the boy delivers the message, gets caught by Lincoln. He has to tell them that you know he's been he's been delivering these messages for Michael for a while now. Uh, pretty interesting. And uh, so we learned that, you know, the, the, the messenger boy calls Michael the bubblegum man. And now Lincoln, now Lincoln's the Tic Tac man because he offers some Tic Tacs. Pretty cool, pretty funny stuff. Um, and it's a cool way to get some funny in here because uh, from this point on, I'm pretty sure it's very, very intense, like for the whole episode. Um, it was, it's, I feel like this is really the climax of all the other episodes, uh, you know, episode two and one. Uh, so pretty interesting. So, um so we learned that Michael, it wasn't just Arabic writing, the way that the paper was folded and the way that the uh, callig calligraphy is, I guess it was what it's called, is written is unusual. So they decipher that it's actually a map and they find that one of the eyes or something is like dotted with a red dot instead of like, and all the other ink is uh, black. So they learn that that's the location that Michael wants them to go to. So they figure out how to decipher this weird map of writing that he created um, and find and go to the spot and when they go to that spot they find out that that was actually a store that Michael used to own um, but he hadn't been back because obviously he got locked up they get the keys to get in there because I guess they got mad money like yo what you're gonna see the common theme is like Link and uh, fucking uh, Cena went down here with fucking cash everything they need they're just tossing cash up in the air like they must have got Westmoreland's money or some shit um, but anyway fucking um cut back to the prison and uh you see that um it's pretty much a war between ramal's dudes and you know the deviants is what they call them the homosexuals the foreigners right so you know they want to make uh, an example of that main homosexual dude that is um a uh, part of michael's crew and so they start hanging him uh michael comes out from wherever the fuck he was at i guess he was sleeping or some shit and he comes out and he's like um yo you, you can't hang him you know and uh ramal's like no nah, i gotta do this you know what i mean this is my religion this is how we go so michael's like all right well i'm gonna get him down so ramal says no but he doesn't really make any physical attempt to stop michael you know they're tight at the end of uh episode two you know what i mean like uh you know they hug and fucking shit you know michael knows arabic michael's running a deep deep undercover game and that's what we find out this this episode was a lot of reveals you know we if, if i were to skip ahead here you know this episode revealed that michael's been working for the cia and he's been getting their people out of certain prisons and they've done this in colombia they've done this in egypt uh sounds like they've done this a bunch but for some reason something went wrong on this mission uh they got betrayed by this person they say poseidon right they say poseidon and the reason i think poseidon is a person just one person instead of a group it's because um you know whip pretty much says so he says poseidon and then the next sentence he says he betrayed us so so poseidon is to me unless that was like a miss you know a miscut they should have cut that out um poseidon doesn't seem like a group as much as it, it seems like an individual who other people are working for uh, if we cut back to Sarah, we find out that, um, you know, she's being tailed by these Poseidon goons um, that, uh, you know, that we've seen since episode one. The ones that shot uh, Jacob, the husband, in the leg. Uh, it, it took me a long time to f hunt down all these names. I got a lot of new names today. Uh, so pretty much in episode two, the chick that Sheba or the dude that Sheba ran into that they had history. Uh, I guess his name in the show is Cyclops. That's how it came up on the subtitles. So that's that's what we're calling him is Cyclops, which it was fitting. Uh, also, obviously, Jacob is the name of the husband. I didn't really catch that in the first two episodes. Um, Michael, the Canyon Aldis thing. And so there's a lot of deep things, you know, deep things going on. So the A story I wrote down is the escape. The B story 
was Michael and Whip. Uh, you know, Whip speaks to this Christian uh, army dude in the prison, and he says that he was locked, he was in solitary across from Michael for some time, I guess, while Whip was not. Or, yeah, yeah, there was some time where Michael was in solitary for some reason that we don't know, uh, and Whip was not. I guess the reason, actually, is because Michael tried to break out when he first got there, so then he got put into solitary. So it sounds like Michael, you know, told this Christian dude about the escape, uh, but then the Christian dude said he didn't want to do it, or he had to he had to go with his brother as well. That's what it was. His the Christian dude wanted his brother to be in the, in on the escape as well, and uh, Michael said no. So and that's actually that story is a setup, and it and it climaxes later on in the story. So it's pretty interesting. Uh, so just to skip to that. So no, 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 we can't skip. We can't skip that far. Let's talk about Michael and Whip. So Michael and Whip are having a disagreement. You know, um, Whip is has listened to this Christian dude, and he believes that Michael might be playing him. You know, Michael is playing a lot of different angles. You know, if you remember episode one, uh, Jacob really did this this huge uh, monologue where he's talking about game theory and pretty much saying that he believes that Michael's been just playing the people in his life and hasn't really cared about anything and more cares about, like, winning at whatever game he's playing. Um, so pretty interesting, uh, pretty symbolic and, uh, metaphorical there. So Whip confronts Michael about this and he's like, uh, you know, can I trust you or whatever? And, uh, there's something goes down where, and this is skipping ahead a little bit, but pretty much, uh, they end up getting an altercation about it. Uh, but it seems like that altercation was staged by Michael. But I don't want to go too far because this was a deep episode. There were so many different things uh, going on here. It's pretty ridiculous. Um, so another setup, I think, for maybe a future episode or something that they've done is uh, when you cut back to Sheba and uh, Sheba, Link, and C-Note, they're in that shop that Michael used to own. And it's very reminiscent to season two of Prison Break where uh, uh, Mahone had broken into Michael's uh not broken in, but, you know, he was uh, he was investigating Michael after they broke out of prison the first time, and he went to their home and found that he had been planning the breakout. So it was the same thing. It was his planning chamber. The, the store that Michael bought, it was actually a planning chamber for him to plan this uh, escape from uh, Ogajia. So, uh, so they set up that, they see that Michael's original escape route was uh, ISIL territory. So, you know, I'm sure that's going to play off later you and i was thinking it would have something to do with ramal you know why he's staying so close to ramal but we'll get into that uh so another thing i wrote down for the c story so the, so the a story is the escape the b story is michael and whip the c story is michael or canyon Aldis. you know michael schofield or canyon Aldis, because um the the cinematography and the narrative of the episodes have really been playing with the viewer and making us wonder can we trust Michael? Is this a new Michael? You know, sometimes storms can come back different, right? Isn't that what they said in one of the earlier episodes? So very interesting stuff right there. Uh, so I would say the D story, it's, it's getting pretty long, but the D story is obviously Ramal versus the homosexuals, which that gets cleared up real fast. Um, Michael attempts to save the homosexual dude from getting, being hung. As soon as he approaches, uh, one of the guards like shoots his gun in the air and and uh, he, I think he actually shoots the dude down with his gun. I'm not sure. Uh, something interesting happened right there. But uh, so, you know, homosexual dude saved for another day. And the only reason I'm calling him as I, I couldn't catch his name. I didn't catch it. I, I, I'll go back and watch the first two episodes and I bet I'll catch it. And another interesting thing happened where uh, in this was like they set this up in episode two when Sarah met Kellerman in the uh, in that place. And, and so remember when Kellerman made her like a glass of water, I knew there was something up. I couldn't tell whether they were just doing a play on season two where they were like threatening to kill the vice president with a, with a poisoned bottle of water. You know, they really set this bottle of water up and made it seem like, like, what are they trying to do? Are they really going to kill the vice president? Um, which that's, it ended up being a swerve, you know, uh, it didn't end up turning out like that. So pretty interesting right there. Uh, we find out that the reason that he switched the bot, you know, switched the bottle for the cup is to get her to touch the cup so that he could get her thumbprint and hack her, uh, phone. So she finds out her phone's being hacked. She goes down to this electronics place and, uh, come to find out that, uh, that's how she finds out that Kellerman 
is hacking her phone. But the only issue is, at, like, after she finds that out, she notices that, like, the Poseidon dudes, like, roll up and they're looking for her and they beat up the dude that's, like, working there and, uh, for, you know, forces him to give them some information about her. Uh, but then when they go to leave, they see that she's, like, watching them from across the street. They chase her and, uh, she uses, like, a, uh, a trick to kind of escape them, you know, make them think that she escaped one way where she's actually still hiding in the area. Really good trick. Uh, and you don't see that a lot. So that, that's pretty good. So a couple questions like, why did Michael pay for uh, the surgery? You know, it's, it's for for a uh, tea bag. You know, I thought they were I thought they hated each other. My original theory was that maybe Michael felt guilty for tea bag losing his arm. If you guys don't remember, um, I believe it's season two. Uh, after the escape, T-Bag had handcuffed himself to Michael in order to protect himself from being killed by a bruising. Um, he thought that if Michael was weighed down with a dead body, then, um, then it would be too difficult for a bruisey to get, um, the Fibonacci dude out of him. You know, he needed Michael, he needed his brain. Um, so he thought being handcuffed to him was the perfect out to protect him. But a bruisey ended up just cutting his hand off. Uh, so so that's that's how that happened uh so i felt i thought maybe michael felt guilty about that but maybe there's more to it i, I don't know the passports okay so so this was like around like act two i would say like the halfway point um you know they're planning for the escape everyone is ready for the escape which is supposed to be tonight and uh lincoln says that they need two passports one for him one for for michael so sheba can contact that one guy that she contacted before who was supposed to sell them the passports, uh, or, you know, that he sold his passport to earlier. The guy says that he can forge two passports. He tells them where to meet the dudes, right? They go there, and, of course, it's like the biggest ISIL trap you've ever seen in your life. And uh, so so they're trapped. Uh, moving forward, um, yes, so then we find out that Poseidon put, put them in here to get Ramal out. Uh, Michael mentions that his government wants Ramal out for some strange foreign policy, blah, blah, blah. Um, so it's revealed that Michael's working for the government to break people out. Sometimes it seems like there's their, their own CIA agents. Other times it's these war criminals, you know, and, uh, it's actually pretty gross. It's, it's, it's really strange. So we find out that they've spent like four years there, you know, it's, it's absolutely nuts. Uh, so very interesting, very strange. I, you know, there's still more to be revealed, but we got a lot of the the puzzle. You know, it's not looking so vague now. We kind of understand. Uh, there, it's just something on a grand scale. I wouldn't call it wacky. Like I see a lot of articles online. It seems like articles always just like read the article that came before and then use the same terminology instead of coming up with their own ideas. But I see the word wacky um, thrown around a lot. I don't think it's wacky. I think it's really interesting and deep. I think it's a mystery, you know. Um, I, I don't agree with the wacky statements. Yeah, the passports are a trap. Um, Shiva is captured by the Cyclops dude, and he tries to rape her. Um, it's pretty interesting. Uh, Lincoln is trapped in some room, and you can tell that Shiva and the Cyclops dude had a, a deep past. Um, Shiva even admits that he tried to rape her before. Uh, so pretty interesting stuff. Uh, Michael steals. He he gets in a fight with uh with Whip, but it's a stage fight. He uses this fight to steal a watch off of uh, Mustafa, which is one of the guards. Uh, then he plants that watch on Ramal, and so then it it creates like a prison lockout or a prison lockdown, and so they start looking for that fucking watch. So during the lockdown, after they've checked their cell everyone prepares for the breakout because it's like it's pretty much time they find the guards find the watch on ramal ramal find you know figures out that michael betrayed him and is like pretty much ready to declare war on that dude uh, michael and his homies are almost through the roof now they're they're pretty much ready for the escape the blackout has already happened um and they get up there into the ceiling vents and come to find out during a blackout this is what michael did not plan for during a blackout, they actually put more guards on the roof. So Michael had not planned on that. Also, he didn't plan on the, the guards being beat up by the rest of the prisoners in a prison riot taking place. 
Um, so the prison riot takes place. They get the guards' guns. They get the guards' keys, and they start going to Michael's cell because Michael's the one who betrayed them. Um, Ramal figures out that Michael and his homies are trying to escape right now without him. And it, this is actually a really deep part of the the show because it we finally see that Michael is not Kenyal Aldis. He's Michael Schofield. He's here. He's got a mission. He's trying to do that mission. He tried to do that mission. It failed. So now he's just trying to do the right thing. Leave Ramal in prison and just escape with the people that shouldn't be there. And it's 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 really refreshing to know that he he's not turning evil you know and it was right up until the end right up until the climax it was like is he turning evil has he become evil you know you just don't fucking know um but no you know he's not turning evil so if we uh cut back to sarah you know she has gotten away from the poseidon goons she met up with jacob they've gone to live with jacob's parents for a little bit and now i've never trusted this jacob dude i don't know what it is about him he swears he's so smart when your nose like wrinkles up and blah 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 i just i don't know man something about that dude i'm not feeling him so anyway, she tells him about the Poseidon goons chasing her down and he kind of like gives her the speech of like trying to like, you know, counter, you know, why don't they go to the cops and don't try to be uh, like uh, do some counter terrorism type of shit or something to to stop them. It kind of makes Sarah want to reach back out to Teabag, who had confronted her earlier on in the episode and asked to be aligned with her to so that they could figure out what the fuck's going on. Uh, so pretty interesting stuff there. Now, I want to zoom in on what Whip says. Whip says that when you pulled pulled me out of that prison in the Okazaks, I don't know what the fuck the Okazaks are, but he says, when you pulled me out of that prison in the Okazaks, you had integrity. Uh, don't know what the fuck. He, he, I mean, he seemed like he was trying to say that he doesn't know what kind of person Michael is, but by the end of the episode, I think we all know that Michael is still good old Michael, and he hasn't he hasn't had any crazy changes um and he also says that i know we're doing cia work sure pulling their people out and uh he says some other stuff but i don't fucking remember um he also says it's just a name like can you talking about can you out um it's just a name a way to get you locked up you know it's not you and by the end of the episode that has really hit home it's really not him and it's great because i don't know you you if you're a fan like me you've been watching prison break for michael schofield not no fucking can you out so yeah so toward the climax of the episode uh ramal has gotten into um schofield's cell they've actually pulled the homosexual dude out of the the ceiling uh hole and so he's like michael has to leave that dude behind you know there's there's absolutely nothing he can do he tried um cut back to cyclops sheba and lincoln lincoln kind of taps into the the mind of schofield and like finds a way to like break out of his room and save sheba from getting raped by um cyclops who was who was about to get it like he was he was turning her over so uh also before the breakout one of my favorite lines from this episode was from the korean dude and he says something along the lines that like a homosexual dude asks him um i don't know why i keep saying it like that look i don't got no problem with him but it's just i don't know what the fuck his name is um but anyway freaking that dude asks the korean guy he's like "Where, where are you gonna go when you get out and he says something along the lines of my couch where the walls are mine the floors are mine where nothing can get to me where the outside stays outside like it's supposed to and i just thought that was so deep like it was such a real like i really like the character development that that conversation created and uh when i watch the show i am looking to see are these other characters being developed whips being developed uh the the gay dude he's getting some development the korean dude's getting a lot of development and then there's another like dude that doesn't really talk that doesn't get any development like i don't know who the fuck that other guy is and when, and when they talk about what they'll do when they get out michael seems to be taking it in but at that time of the show it was hard to know whether he was really taking it in or if he was like can you out it's like you know what i mean we like uh before like the last um seconds of the show you really don't know i mean, until until the breakout um 
so yeah so pretty much long story short which it, i know it's already been a long story uh michael the the breakout fails even though the blackout is a success they get up into the roof and there's m too many guards up there like he didn't know about this break this blackout procedure um also uh you know uh, fucking so they get caught they get caught they get like walked back inside at the end of the episode him and ramal are like across the hall from each other in solitary and ramal saying like by god in my army i'm coming after you you'll be dead probably by tomorrow um so michael still has the korean dude's phone so he makes this last ditch all all is lost this is the all is lost moment of the episode michael's crying he's 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 got the camera on on, on the phone and he's he's making a message to sarah and he he says you know please don't let this name be on my headstone you know please let my headstone say michael schofield he says that this whole lie it was for you and i just thought that was really deep and um this was just a deep ass episode yo and my final thoughts is like man prison break is fucking good man there's a lot of different stories happening um and just some craziness like it's just unbelievably crazy and uh and i and i love it so i hope you guys enjoy it too and i hope you like my little breakdown and review baby and uh yo my name's tafari and i'm out